Hello, my name is Brian Ferentz, and I collect steam whistles. I collect whistles of all types, but the collection I have here today is a collection of whistles all from railroad trains. Uh, the first whistle I'll uh, tell you about and uh, let you hear is this whistle. This is a replica, full-size replica, of the first steam whistle ever built in 1835 in England. And this is as exact a copy as I could make of uh, the first locomotive whistle that was ever constructed. The next whistle I'll show you is actually from England, but its design is very close to the types of whistles that would have been used in the United States in the 1840s and the 1850s. Um, it's a smaller whistle, but locomotives back in those days were a lot smaller. So this is about the size of whistle that a, a train would have had in, a, in the 1840s. from the Civil War era, the 1860s. It has a big fancy decorative uh, nut on top of it. And uh, in some ways it isn't the best design, but it's already the full size. Whistles would not get bigger than this for the rest of the time that they were in use in the United States. Uh, the early whistles like this only made a single note. So they don't sound real pretty, but they got the job done. The whistles were to signal people and, uh, and warn them to get out of the way. And, and warn them that the train was coming into town. used in the 1870s. Uh, this whistle was from the northwestern United States and it's very similar to whistles that were used by the Northern Pacific Railroad back in the 1870 era. This is a very unusual whistle. It's called a mailbox whistle. It's got a, a different design. It was invented in Fort Wayne, Indiana, this style whistle. It was inexpensive and simple to make. It was one casting and all I had to do was cut threads and cut two slots in the base of the whistle, and the whistle was finished. There were a few railroads in the Midwestern United States that did use this type of whistle, probably only on freight trains, because it doesn't have the prettiest sound, but again, it makes a lot of noise, and that's what was most important. <laughs> the chime whistle was invented and the thing with the chime whistle is it'll make more than one note this whistle was built by Crosby Company in Boston Massachusetts they would sell them to any railroad that uh, was willing to buy them from them and they tend to sound very nice Crosby made whistles for a lot of railroads and they were the ones that had the patent on building chime whistles for a great many years so a lot of the early chime whistles in use were from uh, the Crosby Company. Once chime whistles were invented, it became the pattern that a lot of railroads would use a chime whistle on their passenger trains because they sounded nicer. But they oftentimes still kept to the simple uh, one note whistles for their freight train whistles. Uh, instead of buying a whistle from Crosby, if they wanted a chime whistle, a lot of railroads would make one in their railroad uh, machine shops. This is a copy of a whistle that was uh, used by Casey Jones uh, on his uh, locomotive. Uh, 
I did a lot of research on it and made, made the top of this whistle as close to the actual Casey Jones design as I could. So this would have been a typical uh, chime whistle found on a lot of railroad trains in the 1890s, even in the early 1900s. idea when they saw it. A number of railroads uh, or uh, companies that manufactured uh, items for the railroads started to build uh, chime whistles like this one. This is we call a step top chime because it looks like a flight of steps as you go up the different chimes on the whistle. This whistle has five chimes. Sometimes they used four chimes and uh, sometimes they use six chimes. The chime whistles, as I said earlier, were usually used on uh, passenger trains. This one came from a railroad in the Midwest called the Big Four Railroad. The company that first came out with those, we believe, was a company called Nathan, and they were located in New York State. Uh, I have another five chime step top over here. It's very similar to that. I don't have it hooked up to blow, but that uh, that one uh, came from the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, I also have a, a three chime uh, locomotive whistle, also not hooked up to blow at this time. This one is from the Louisville and Nashville Railroad. And the last one I have over here is from the Reading Railroad, which would have been one of the railroads that served this small town of Tamaqua that we're located in today. This was their freight train whistle. They also had a chime whistle they'd make that they would use on their passenger trains. Uh, Reading Railroad wasn't a big railroad, but it was a very important railroad uh, hauling coal in eastern Pennsylvania. Um, by the eight, uh, 1930s, steam engines were starting to be replaced by diesel locomotives. And you didn't, if you didn't have steam, you couldn't blow these whistles. They required a lot of pressure. But locomotives still had air pressure that they used to stop the train. And so one company, Hancock in uh, New York, uh, decided to try to build a whistle that could be blown off of the airline for the brakes. Now they had to use very little air. If they used too much air, they would bring the train to a screeching halt. Uh, these were used in locomotives, but only a few railroads used them. Uh, most railroads quickly left whistles behind and started using air horns. But in New England, the New York Central Railroad and the New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad did use quite a few of these uh, air whistles made by Hancock. They've got an unusual sound. Some people like them and some people not so much. the most powerful whistle that I own. It's the only one of all these train whistles that could actually stop the train. <laughs> this is called a caboose whistle. It only has a little voice to it. I don't even need the air protection to blow that one. But if the engineer couldn't hear the whistle and there was an emergency, the brakeman on the back of the train could stop the train by simply taking this whistle and turning it down. seconds release the air from the brake lines and bring the train to a stop. So the most powerful whistle on the, on the setup we have today. Okay, I want to... Can you blow the, the Reading Chat? Yes, okay, sorry, I forgot That's okay. That. Okay, my name again is Brian Ferentz. Uh, I'm retired. I was a school teacher for many years. One of my hobbies is collecting uh, steam whistles of all sorts. Here today I've been showing you uh, uh, whistles related specifically to trains. And I live uh, in Schuylkill County, uh, Pennsylvania, in a little town called Summit Station. And uh, you can uh, contact me uh, by phone at Summit Station, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, 
My number is 570-754-7249.